Hey guys, Buffer Game Bad today, bringing another weapon conversion, and today we are covering the Mark 12 SPR Mod H, and I'll also be showing off the Mod 0 or Mod 1. So, we're going to be turning the M4A1 into the Mark 12 SPR. Let's go ahead and back out. I'll show you the weapon uh, final design here. We'll build it up from scratch, jump in the firing range, take a look at how it performs, look at the recoil control, as well as see how it handles in game against bots, and a little bit of footage of. This thing running in ground war as well which is uh, surprisingly effective so we'll go ahead and back out now here's the final design for the mark 12 spr now if i go ahead and back out to the gunsmith what we're going to want to do here is select the base m4a1 there's a couple different builds here i'll show off quickly but this is the one i think that is most accurate to the mod h that i'm i'm trying to replicate and now you may recognize this rifle uh marcus latrell was running a uh Mark 12 Mod 1, I believe it was, for what was Operation Red Wing or Lone Survivor. So just give me, let's see if we can fix this gunsmith glitch here. For whatever reason, Private Matches still likes to glitch like this. But regardless, we can still rotate it at the end. So first off, for the barrel attachment, we're going to want the 419 millimeter barrel. Now... There's two different barrel lengths, a 16-inch and an 18-inch. This is going to give us a little bit over a 16-inch, so this is probably the most accurate. The other one you could do is the M16A4 barrel, which is a high-power 20-inch, which will show off in another build. But for this build here, the Mod H, we're going to be going with the 419-millimeter barrel. This will give us damage at range, hip fire accuracy, and bullet velocity, with the cons being ADS speed and hip recoil control. So we'll select that. Now, for the muzzle, we're going to want to suppress around this thing, try and stretch out that damage at range because we're still firing the 5.56. So, I would recommend either the Harbinger uh, D20, that wrap suppressor, or the uh, Echolus 80. These both give you increased damage at range. So, we'll go with the Echolus 80 here. Sound suppression, bullet velocity, damage range, and recoil smoothness, with the cons being aim down sight speed and aiming stability. Now, for the underbarrel option here, we're going to want a bipod. So, really, any of these three bipods. Work pretty well. You could even go with the grip pod there as well. But for this one, I'm going to go with the level aim bipod. This will give us the bipod mount and the aim down sight speed will be the con for that one. So we'll go ahead and select that. Ammunition and magazine will leave at uh, blank for this one. And for the next attachments here, laser option will go with, you can go either with the uh, CZ 1 milliwatt PEC. Or the OEV laser. This will give you the ADS speed, aim stability, sprint to fire speed. Definitely an option there. Again, you can swap some of these attachments out as you see fit. Um, now, for the optic, any high-powered sniper optic will be ideal. Now, since this is really an assault rifle at base, we don't have the best zoom magnifications. I think the best one here is the Luca scope. This is going to give you the 3.7 to the 8 times toggle, with the cons being small glint, aim down sight speed, and aim walking movement speed. So, we'll select that. And that's going to be uh, five of five attachments there. So some things you can swap out would be the uh, laser as well as um, potentially the suppressor you don't necessarily need here. So let's go ahead quick. I'm going to see if I can fix this gunsmith issue so we can see the actual weapon here. For some reason, when you preview the pistol, this is only appears to be in private games. But there's the final design right there of the Mod H. Now, butt stocks, you can do a couple different things there, but this is the build off the M4A1, okay? So, another build here, this is the Mod H. If you look at another build for the Mod 1 or 0, go over here. I, another really good option here that I was playing around with, and this may give you one more bullet uh, faster kill, would be to use the M16 at base. And you're going to do pretty much all the same attachments here, um, and you can swap out... The M16 buttstock, if you want, uh, for any other of the other buttstocks, you really see that any of these would make sense for the SPR, the uh, the assault, the classic M4 stock. You can do the demo fade stock or even this stock here. So the SPR took a variation of different stocks. You can even, if you want to get crazy, put a 15 round mag on there uh, to make it also uh, appropriate to some of the builds you see. But they do take 30, 30 rounds to mag mags. As well, so this would be the other build for the mod zero or the mod one. Again, you can swap out, you can swap out the stock there if you wanted to. The barrel, because we're using the M16, this that's the longest barrel we have is the base barrel, so it doesn't make sense to swap the barrel out. Um, but that would be the other build here for the mod zero or the mod one. Um, now, what we'll go ahead do and go back to this, and we'll bring the mod H to the firing range here with this particular build. So we'll go to firing range. 
And then we'll take a look at the weapon again before we jump in game. So, see here. Very nice looking weapon. And we're using that uh, six, little over that 16 and a half inch barrel there. Uh, because it closely, as close as you can, replicates what is the free-floating barrel of the Mark 12. So, go ahead. We'll use this bipod. You actually have to mount the bipod in this game. You can't just lay down. You actually need to hit the mount button to use it, which I think is really cool. Swap this to single fire, and you can see we have the toggle here. So, really fast uh, rate of fire here. And again, it's going to be around a five or six, six shot kill, even in uh, some of the gameplay I was playing with against actual players. So you can see five there. If you use the M16 build, it's gonna, it seems like it's going to be one less bullet to kill. But regardless, it's around the same. The only perk here is that accurate to the SPR, you do have the ability with the M4 build here, the Mod H, to go full auto in situations where you need to. Right, so you can see it's still going to be fairly accurate, especially when you're mounted like that. And if I were to stand up and not use the bipod, it's still going to be decent when you're in a, in a crush. So anything, ideally this build, being in a special purpose rifle, you would want to use it in single fire for longer ranges. And then anything close quarters based on your secondary, you would just let it rip full auto. For emergency situ situations, which is really what exactly how the uh, actual Mark 12 was built. Now, recoil-wise, there's really not any recoil we need to cover here because you're shooting in semi-auto. If I were to just kind of let it rip semi-auto on this target here in the back, in the back wall behind that target. Now, that's not even controlling it. So you can see, utilizing the bipod, you're going to be pretty accurate. If I unmount the bipod. Again, pretty accurate. Let's see it once more here. Now that's not mounting. You can see it's a little bit less accurate, but still not bad. Mounting. And then if I were to go full auto, it's obviously going to be a little bit harder to control. But again, that's more for close quarters, emergency situations. So you can see... Pretty accurate weapon, not a lot of recoil there. Let's go ahead and back out. We'll just take a look at this weapon at base. So again, we're using, it is essentially, this weapon really was derived off the salt mod upgrade program. So if we take a look at the weapon here um, and go to customization, we'll go ahead and just rotate it around really quickly. You can see we're using that four, 416 millimeter barrel or 406, whichever it is here in game. The uh, We're using that. Yeah, the 419 millimeters. This is around 16 and a half inches. This clo as closely replicates that free-floating barrel that we see on the Mark 12s. Um, again, it's this, your standard M4 AR-15 build, though. You have the uh, fire select switch, mag release, uh, bolt bolt release, uh, ejection port, and uh, here the uh, fire controls are appear to be ambidextrous on this one. So, again, really nice-looking build. You can see it looks aesthetically pleasing with the bipod, and you, like I said, you can swap out any of the butt stocks with this. But this is the Mark 12 SPR Mod H. Now the difference here is the Mod H has a 16-inch barrel in real life, and the Mod 1 and Mod 0 have a 18-inch barrel. So that's where the difference is between this being the Mod H and the M16 build being the Mod 0 Mod 1. We have a 20-inch barrel with that, and then we have a 16 and a half here with this. So. Let's go ahead now, and we'll jump into the gameplay with this. Um, really quick here, let me just show you guys what the camo looks like, though. So you can see the camouflage is on this. Covers covers the suppressors and everything. It looks really, really, really pretty on this. Um, really nice looking. It covers everything uh, very well. Much better than the Modern Warfare 2019 camouflages did, for sure. So we get full coverage here. Everything looks great in, in, in the appropriate spots. So jump into the gameplay here. You'll see this on Farm 51, just trying to play... Again, we don't have really large maps here available in privates for um, kind of like we did in Modern Warfare 2019. We had that um, we had that one map that I did a lot of my early conversion videos on, especially for uh, the DMR builds there. Um, that that one, I can't remember the name of the, of the map, but I had the bridge in the center and, and the opposing sides. That was a great map for long-range testing, um, kind of like this. We don't really have a map like that in Modern Warfare 2 for the 6v6 modes. Um, that's that large, so it's really hard to get kind of longer range engagements here. I'll, I'll try and throw in a little bit of the clips of me using this in Invasion 
Um, again, it performs how you would expect with those ranges. They didn't have this exact build, so you could probably make it work a little bit better. I would recommend if you're going to use this in a, in a game, specifically Ground War Invasion, to run something on Sling like a, an SMG just for close quarters engagements. But, I mean, if you can mount up this thing, it will um, kill in five to six shots at, at longer ranges, and usually it's around three to four at closer ranges, depending. Again, the M16... See, the M16 build should get give you one less shot to kill, which is the only benefit there. And you get that longer barrel, so that also definitely helps. You could probably extend the barrel. You could swap out this barrel here for the M16 barrel, for that 20-inch barrel, and that would also uh, um, help with your damage at range also. So that's a couple things to consider there. This is the Mark 12 Mod H SPR. SPR originally stood for a special purpose receiver because this was really derived from similar to the first video we did for the weapon conversion series here for Modern Warfare 2. It was derived from uh, the SOP mod upgrades. So it was considered a special purpose receiver because uh, it was part of the SOP mod program essentially is where it came out of. Then it was reclassified to special purpose rifle once it was uh, became a took on a life of its own. And started being utilized more heavily um, as a standalone weapon, similar to what the CQBR did coming out of the so the SOP mod program as well. So we covered that um, Mark 18 CQBR mod one the other day. Um, that weapon, as well as the Mark 12, were both weapons that came out of and became their own weapon out of the SOP mod upgrade program. So that's that's pretty cool to see here. We have these two weapons, um, pretty pretty iconic as well. And like I said, this is the weapon from the Lone Survivor book and movies that Marcus Luttrell in real life ran. He ran a Mod 1, I believe it was. Marcus Luttrell ran the Mark 12 Mod 1 SPR um, for that Lone Survivor Operation Red Wing mission. So that was his rifle. Very effective. Very high-powered rifle. Um, the versions you have for this are the Mark 12 Mod 0, Mod 1, and Mod H. This was in service 2002 through 2017, where it was replaced by the uh, Mark 20 SSR, which is that uh, DMR version of the SCAR program, the SCAR we H weapon. Um, now, the designer of this was Naval Surface Warfare Center Crane Division. A couple different variants, like we said there, the SPR, SPRA, SPRB and the different mods the mass for this weapon is going to be 10 pounds or 4.5 kilograms fully loaded the length is going to be 37.5 inches or 952 millimeters the barrel length for the mod 0 mod 1 is going to be 18 inches for the mod h is going to be 16 inches and the cartridge is going to be that 40 or excuse me the 556 by 45 millimeter nato it is a gas operated rotating bolt and the muzzle velocity for this um, with the round that was designed for this is the Mark 262, and that's the ammunition that was utilized with the Mod 1 ammunition, I believe also the Mod H. So the muzzle velocity for that ends up being around 2,700 feet per second, or 838.2 meters per second. The effective range is 700 meters, or 770 yards Feed system is a 20 or a 30 round uh, Steneg mag. So it takes the same magazines of that 5.56 that we see on the M4 platform, M16s, etc. Now, the need for this really came out of the military. Uh, SOCOM needed something that would extend the ranges a little bit further than the M4 and not quite as far as the M110 or the SR25. So. That's where this came out of is the uh, came out of the salt mod program again, like I said, um, and it was classified as the Mark 12 and developed by Naval Surface Warfare Center's Crane Division for the U.S. Special Operations units, uh, not for Navy units in general, but just specific units utilize this. And again, you saw like Marcus Luttrell, Operation Red, Red Wing, um, a very prolific rifle, I would say, um, and the SPR. Did see a lot of combat, especially in uh, over in Afghanistan and Iraq Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom. It's a really nice weapon. Um, very, very, I think, aesthetically pleasing. And it definitely did um, did the job it was put in, in service to do, is which is, again, extend the M4 ranges. Because the M4, the range there with that 5.6 round is, is definitely limited. And they do need something that wasn't quite as heavy 
or reaching as far as the SR25. The SR25 firing that 762 by 51 cartridge. So the ammo for that, carrying that type of weight um, for that kit is going to be heavier. So this program came out of the Salt Mine Block 2, and it was utilized by U.S. Navy SEALs recon as a recon rifle. So you had different different versions of this that kind of eventually turned in from that Salt Mine program into the SPR. Uh, the Mark 12. Unfortunately, like I said, in 20 in 2017, well, mid 2011, um, it began being removed from from SOCOM and being replaced by the SCAR 17 DMR version of the Mark 20 SSR. And, and I believe it was at least scheduled by 2017. It was supposed to be completely phased out by the Mark 20. So pretty interesting history with this thing and again everyone you watch videos i think grantham has a couple of videos on it and and others it definitely a very reliable weapon and very very accurate weapon um especially with the designs that kind of escalated this thing from through its life cycle from a mod zero to a mod one and then you had the mod h as well and this thing did in real life obviously have the, the ability to go fully auto originally with that salt mod program that utilized parts of m16 a1 and a two lowers and different uppers part of that salt mod program and then when it became a weapon of its own it utilized things from knights and became its own similar to the cqbr which we talked about the other day it became its own weapon which was built from scratch and not not utilizing different uppers and lowers so pretty interesting again the full auto capability as as you would want to use it here in game is for emergency situations but primarily you would use this in semi-auto and again you can use the suppressor here in game or you can just feel free to uh, swap that attachment out or use a muzzle break or something like that to make it a little bit more accurate and keep shots on target. So let me know what you guys think. Until next time, this is Buffman Gaming with the Mark 12 SPR Mod H. Uh, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys are enjoying the content. All the, all the links are down below in the description for Twitter, Instagram, things like that. Go ahead and check those out if you're interested. Reach out to me with any questions, suggestions for videos in the future. Until next time, Buffman Gaming, out.